What's going on guys? Jake Teaser with the latest Mustang and automotive news. Today's video is about the 2021 Mustang Mach 1 and what they got right. Now, I've seen some people post videos recently saying that here's everything that's wrong with it. Well, to be honest, I'm just going to go through and tell you what they got right with it. And I know it's popular to make kind of counter videos and stuff like that. Um, I did not watch Stang Mode's video. I didn't even, because I didn't want it to persuade me one way or the other. But, uh, so I got on the forums and I was just curious if other people, I only read like two or three posts, but essentially it looks like people are saying the same thing. Like, um, they're purists. They're more like saying the 350, um, if you read this guy's comment, I believe it was over here. It's like, okay, so what, we're only allowed to like the 350 and the 500s. So are, you're only allowed to like the GT350 and the GT500, right guys? So I think what that's coming from is people that were expecting the Mach 1 to be completely... Okay, well for one thing, we hyped up the horsepower. Um, someone said that it was going to get four, 525 horsepower. Well, it didn't get 525 horsepower. Okay. It got um, 480, which is essentially the new generation 5 liter Coyote with the GT350 uh, throttle body and intake and tune, I believe. I think that's all it is. Anyways, it's got the bullet engine, basically. It's not much. They didn't change much on the engine. So the engine's only up 20 horsepower. 460 is what the GT has. This has 480. So nothing much changed there, okay? Uh, reality though, Ford would have to basically go to the drawing board and come up with some new a new engine or a, a, you know change the compression, change the compression, change the heads. They would have to do something in order to get that. So I don't know really what we were thinking. We were hoping that they were going to. Um, I don't know what we were hoping for that would actually change that without having to do an extensive, um, you know, change the heads, change the compression, do do some really heavy work to actually get the the engine to be different and to get that much more horsepower out of it. So someone someone had a rumor and we went with it, and I think that just kind of overhyped the fact that the Mach One was just going to be another car that was you know, pieced together from the GT350. The, so all, basically what happened is you have the Mustang GT, the Performance Package 1, and then if you guys remember, Performance Package 1 came out in 2015 with the release of the S550 Mustang, okay? That was the first, one of the first, I wasn't one of the first, I bought it at the end of the year, um, but I owned the 2015 Mustang GT Performance Package. I watched all this stuff. I bought it the first year it came out. So... I got to see how they rolled out the models. And then it wasn't until like 2018 until the Performance Package 2 came out. And then they rolled out the Bullet. And then, so before the Performance Package 2, there was the GT350. And I think that was in like, what, what year would, did that come out? 16 or something? 16? So what I'm getting at is the GT350 helped them create the Performance Package 2 Mustang. So they, they used the GT350 and they took the they took the suspension, the wheels and tires, and some of the aero, and they used some of that technology, not all of it, just very little of it, and they put that on the Performance Package 2. And then from there, the new engine came in 2018, and they added to the Bullet, they made more horsepower on the Bullet, and then they, they upgraded the GT350 to the version 2 GT350, which had a little bit different aero and bits and pieces better suspension to the newer GT350 for 2019. And then they trickled down that technology again to another GT, and that's where you got the Mach 1. So there, if you just look at the Mach 1, let's just look at some photos, and we'll just go over exactly the biggest things. I'll, I'll just tell you, the biggest things right now is going to be the transmission and the fact that it has aero from the GT350, cup two tires, and cooling for the rear differential. So the old GT350s didn't even have cooling. They didn't have a diff cooler. Um, so you couldn't run it around the track. 
So what I'm saying is, the if you look at, let's just look at the photo. All right. So these are the best looking wheels I've seen on a GT. And I know what you guys are trying to say. You guys are trying to say, well, there's nothing unique about it. It doesn't have a blower like the GT500. It doesn't have a 5.2 liter flat plane crank uh, from the GT3. Well, what did you want them to do? What do you want them to make a, a special engine for this, uh, you know, this for, for a Mach 1? I mean, the Mach 1 has never been, I don't know, the, I don't actually don't know the history of the Mach 1. What I'm saying is they would have to completely retool and recreate a new engine just for that. So so I, I honestly don't know why I kind of bought into that. I guess I didn't think about it deep enough. But because essentially some of these rumors have been true. I was really surprised that the GT500 made 760 horsepower when they did release it. Because that's such a huge jump. It's a 100 horsepower jump over the last GT500. That's a lot of power coming from a 5.2 liter. Especially if you compare it to the Hellcat or something like that. Now... Uh, that, that's that's why I, I wasn't I, I wasn't disappointed. So the reason you guys some of the guys are disappointed is because you have high expectation and you have a high expectation either from you heard something about the horsepower numbers or you, I, I have very low expectations for the Mach One. I just had heard a rumor that there was going to be higher horsepower. Um, someone said that they talked to someone at Ford and they said there's going to be higher horsepower. So I wasn't really you know, great if it had a great motor. I'm actually more excited that the car actually looks really d dang good. That's that's what I that's what I care about more. You can get a GT. It's basically a GT. You can get a, a non a GT car, non GT350 or GT500 that looks as good or better than the GT350 or the GT500. And it's simple. We know the Coyote's bulletproof. You're not going to worry about it throwing a um, not throwing a rod, but you're not going to worry about the piston slap and all this stuff. Um, hopefully they got the tick figured out. I'm not sure. I haven't been reading the forums for the 2019, 2020s, but I know the 2018s had some noise at idle. But I mean, come on, guys, this engine will hold a thousand wheel horsepower. And look, so so essentially, what are they going to do? They're going to take the GT500 parts, i.e., four and a half inch exhaust tips, GT350 wing, cut two tires from the GT350R. And they're gonna they're gonna design some new specific wheels for the Mach One. They're gonna make you know they're gonna make it look look good. They did they did a whole unique bumper, I mean, and an aggressive unique bumper. You know, here's the non-performance package one. And hey, I think the front bumper looks good. I think it looks a heck a heck of a lot better than the Bullet. The Bullet um, to me just had it was just like an open bumper with a little aluminum trim and this around the window aluminum. And I'm not really down with the the brushed aluminum thing if that's your thing that's cool um you know i'm not big on this color scheme either but it's not bad i like it you know you do your thing whatever you want to do um what i do like is that on this one it is blacked out here i think that flows pretty good and it matches the wheels i like that um but as far as being disappointed i didn't have high expectations for this car i didn't have any expectations if it was like a gt 500 r or the new redesigned gt350 or if they came out with a different this and that then i would have been disappointed about this car but i didn't have any expectations for this car being really much of anything except for a, a significant amount more horsepower naturally aspirated um so i wasn't disappointed okay 480 that's not a big deal because they put the trimic in it i was more surprised that they actually put the trimic manual into this car that means it's going to be a runner. That means it's going, be, it's going to be ready for the track. You're going to be able to take this dude around the track and just lap the heck out of it. Because it's got the the axle cooler. And it's got those cut two tires. This thing is going to be a weapon at the track. If they dial it in like a R, like a three, if they dial this one in like a 350R with a bullet motor, and they dial this one in like a 350, as far as I'm talking suspension, wheels, tires, brakes, and the Magna Ride setup. If they tune this, if they tune this one like a GT350, and they tune this one like a GT350R, and this is a setup like a GT350R with just um, with just a bullet engine, then this thing will be a uh, this thing will be a, a fun car to drive, and it'll be fast for what it is. So that's the way you should look at it. You shouldn't look at it like a you should look at this thing as like the underdog. It's just a it's a GT that's got a bunch of parts thrown at it. It's got a bullet engine, some GT350 parts, 
you know, basically that's all, that's what it is. Um, but the GT350 technology finally trickled down to a GT uh, platform, and that's what they did. They put all these parts in there. So I think it's cool. Um, that's what I think. I, there's nothing wrong with it at all. I don't think that they should have, you know, if they could have got some more torque out of it or whatever. But the way that they're going to have to do it is they're going to have to take the stuff and they're going to have to... Um, they would have to re. They would have to recreate a whole engine. Why would they want to do that when 480 horsepower is enough, and it looks so good that I don't think anybody's gonna be complaining about this? Okay. Now, let's play devil's advocate and let's go with Stang mode. I like I said, I didn't watch the video, but I'm assuming he's gonna say something like the horsepower, and then it probably doesn't have a DCT. Um, it, it's not unique enough. Uh, what would be the other disappointments? Other disappointments on this car, you could say. I, I honestly, personally like this car. I don't see anything wrong with it. Um, okay. Being able to get the 10-speed with the performance package car. So, you can't get the 10-speed auto in this color. I'm not in this. Well, you can't even. Yeah, that's true, too. This color is unique to this performance package. I don't know what they call it. We're just going to call this one the performance package. That's what it is. Um, you can only get the 10-speed auto in this one, the non-performance package Mach 1. So, performance pack Mach 1 only gets the Tremec that comes out of the GT350. So, yeah, it does get the Tremec. That's awesome. It does not get the auto. So, would I want the track car with the auto? Probably not. When I think, when I think auto, I think street car. I think put a supercharger on it, twin turbo. I really think put a twin turbo kit on it. And let it roll through those gears and it's fun um you know if you're at the track you might enjoy that trimic a little bit more but you know that's that's personal preference so i could see people complaining about the um not having the 10 speed or not having the dct if some if somebody wants a dct they oh they could have put a dct yeah yeah i could see that but this car was gonna that this car might be another five or seven thousand dollars and then you're you're into the territory of a GT350. So they can't they can't push this car up into the GT350. I mean they can. Would it be cool if Ford just had a bunch of options checklists where you can just say, yeah, I'll take the the DCT and where you could just piece all this stuff together? You know, it's like Subway though. Like they only have so many pieces and parts that they can put together. It's like an assembly line, right? So they're trying to maximize profits and not make things, not diminish the brand, not make things that people aren't going to buy because then that doesn't look, that's not good. On paper, you've got to sell these ideas to people. So, you know, if you could get a DCT transmission option, yeah, that would have been cool. Um, so I can see where people would complain about not having the DCT. Um, I could see people complaining about the 10 speed not being available in the performance package. I could see people complaining about it not having enough power. Yeah, I agree. You know, it would have been great if it would have had 500. So another 20. So where would they get that other 20? They'd have to bump the compression, but the compression's already like, it's super high already in the 18s. They bumped it up like a whole point over the 2015 to 2017s. So that's why the 18 already has a little bit more torque. Is they bumped up the compression so much. So, um... There's room to grow on the, the five liter, probably, but not, you know, it, it's not going to be easy. So it's already got an intake manifold, throttle body, and a cold air intake. I believe that's what's on the bullet setup. So, you know, where do you go from there? You put some headers on it, maybe? I mean, that might, you know, they don't do that, though. They, they want those um, exhaust manifolds that last longer. Um, so they don't crack, or they, 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 they want the car to last a long time. So trying to extract more power out of this thing you know well what you could buy a tune with it that might have been cool if you can get a tune option like buy a ford um a ford engine tune that gives you 20 horsepower you know it's that's what i'm saying though once you on these 2018s the compression's already high so if you're out in california like me you're running 91 octane those tunes don't do too much for you so, because the 91, you, the ignition time in it can only go so high on that 91 with the high compression engine. And, you know, if it's, if it's hot out here and you're running up the mountain with the air conditioner on, a lot of load on that engine, and you're running a tune where they raise the, where they raise the ignition timing and this stuff, 
you're not going to, you're going to get knock and it's not going to, you know, so they can't really mass produce, you know, they've got to figure that out. I don't know. Um, so yeah, it could have came up, it could have had more power, but I don't know where they would get it from. That's why they have the 5.2 liter GT350. It has more displacement. It's easier to make more power out of a slightly larger engine that revs to 8,000 RPMs, right? Um, so to get even more power out of such a small engine, they had to raise the red line a lot. And by doing that, they lost torque. So I would rather have, I know I'm not making a case. I was supposed to do the pros. I was supposed to do, I was supposed to go into the cons, but honestly, I've heard that the GT is a little, it's torquier around town. So it might, it might feel like it has more balls around town than the GT350. And um, so I don't know if that's really a pro or a con. I mean, I would rather have the 5.0. Let's be honest. I'd rather have the 5.2. But then we're looking at a GT350. You know? And if you put a supercharger on it, you're looking at a, a GT500. So there's not a lot of wiggle room. I think they basically did as much as they could without making this car step on top of the shoes of the GT350, the GT350R, and the GT500. So with the transmission and the suspension and the aero and the cooling and the looks, damn, I like this car, man. You know, I'm and I'm one that really is subtle. I like subtle and I'm not really into all the graphics and the, the dark wheels with the orange calipers and the orange that matches the pinstriping and all this stuff. It gets a little busy, you know. Would I like it more with all this removed? Maybe, um, maybe. But when I look at it, they did it class. Like they did it real classy. Like it's not gonna. It's not too much to where to where it's too over the top. Um, so yeah, I'm digging. I'm not digging those. They're all right. Those are more. Um, those Mach One on the base Mach One. The non-performance pack Mach 1, those are more period wheels. Those are period wheels like from the actual Mach 1. They're just retro they're retro Mach 1 wheels. So, and this is, looks like it's off of Ford Focus RS. That's what I kept thinking in my head. But I like it. I like this. So, and this is a 350, the fangs from the 350, the GT350. And an RS little oval here. So, um... What else can we talk about? The con, what, what could they have done better? So we're going to play devil's advocate and say, what could they have done better? They could have offered the automatic plus the DCT. They could have offered a little bit more horsepower, but I don't really know where that they would get that horsepower from unless they had to really change some stuff around. More aggressive cam timing. Uh, sorry, more aggressive cams. <clears throat> rework the heads. Raise the compression. Tune it. This kind of stuff. Then you're really getting into like, you know, have they had enough time to do the tried and true testing out in the desert around the racetrack for all those miles for years to really improve on? Or they have different plans. Does Ford have different plans? They're gonna, you know, they're gonna have a Gen Four Coyote in like two years, and they're busy working on that. You know, that might be the next. The the base model five liter might be four hundred and ninety horsepower next. You know, and they're working on a different one where all that stuff's already there. So they're saving their energy and their time. The bullet engine's good enough. We know they know exactly how to build the trend, the suspension that works so well on the S550 chassis from the GT350R. So we're just going to throw all that all that stuff on this car, the bullet engine, and let it roll. Trim it, tranny, and we're good. So that's um, yeah. They they could have. I don't think they could have any done any better on the wheels. I don't think they could have done any better on the styling. I don't think they could have done any better on. Um, the engine aside from, you know, where are they going to get the extra power from guys? You know, they're going to have to really put some money and time into it. And, and I'm assuming that they're saving that money and time for the GT350, the next one, or the next GT500 KR, or, you know, the performance, the track, the, the, the even more track oriented GT500 or, you know, all the other stuff that they got going on. Cause they're not, they're going to have any problems selling this car. You think they're going to have any problems selling this car right here? I mean, if you read the Mustang forms, apparently people aren't satisfied. So let's just go through and see. I really didn't read any. I just I posted this video because I saw some people were getting some pushback about, you know, they didn't like it. But and um, 
in my estimation, I think that they did a they did a good job. Yeah, people are saying the price. Um, yeah, yeah, Tremec was a surprise to me too. So I wasn't I wasn't really um, disappointed that the power. I was surprised that they actually <clears throat> put the Tremec in there. So I wasn't disappointed by the power. I was surprised that they actually put the Tremec transmission in there. That's that was my big thing. So. All right, guys. Um, yeah, for 50K. Is it going to be 50K? I'm sure it'll be 50K for the performance pack. Yeah. Uh, a base a base GT is like 39, right? So 10K for the Tremec and the Aero and the wheels and tires and the four, the extra horsepower and the appearance package and the Aero, the cooling and all this stuff. Yeah, for sure. Um Yeah, so here is the, oh, here's the little thing that Ford put out. I didn't see this. So I'm curious with the with the Tremec TR3160 if the 373s is the same gearing that the GT350 has. If so, that's going to be a long first gear. Um, this does have the rear diff cooler. And... 19 by 10 and a half on the rear. I wish they would just keep all the... So it's got 1911 on the performance package car. I'm down with that. And 305, 30, 19s all the way around on the performance package car. Looks like. Yeah, and the base model had the base... Uh, the non-performance has the... Oh, sorry. 305s. 305, 30s in the front. 315, 30. 315, 30s? 315s. They're running 315s in the Mach 1 in the rear. Come on. Uh, GT500 rear subframe and tow link standard Magna ride. The sway bars are bigger. You know, it's got all, um, it's got Mach 1 tuning specific, you know, specific Mach 1. So, uh, this is the Mach E. That's the Mach 1. The Mach-E is the electric one, you know. So, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. That is just what I wanted to just talk about is... Um, I didn't want to watch it. Maybe I'll go watch it now and uh, learn all the stuff that I missed. Because, I'm actually, I won't even have to watch it. Because you guys are just going to tell me all in the comment section. And I don't care if you don't like the car. I like it. So how about that? All right, guys. Uh, let me know. Uh, let me know what you think in the comment section. I don't have to tell you that. You're gonna let me know already. Um, but hit the subscribe button if you want to stay up to date with the latest Mustang and automotive news. Be sure to check out the Amazon links in the in the uh, in the description in the comment section, and I will keep you updated. Catch you next time.